Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is a sewing vlog. It's the last episode for January. So I'm going to look back at all of December and all of January and ask, was it worth it to do daily videos? Spoiler alert. Yes, it was. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So last episode I showed you about 14 or 15 of my patchwork dresses that I made in the past year, 13 months, which seems like a lot. <laughs> I'm glad. I, um, I felt like I wasn't doing much. Anyway, I've got the green one to go. The other ones have been made, but I've got the green one yet to go. So that's another 13 um, fat quarters plus uh, two yards of green floral print. And those two I've already made up. And in that video, I mentioned that I wanted to try this floral jacket with the strawberries on the red dress. Because the red dress has um, a couple of different strawberry print um, fabrics in it. So, yeah, I just sort of play musical um, jackets first. So I tried it on the colour block one. And it looks absolutely adorable on that. But I am going to eventually move it to the other two jackets. So this is so cute. I swear, this jacket looks adorable on everything I try it on. It. I put it on the orange one that I made this month, earlier in the month. And now it looks great on that one. It looks good on this rose and coral one too, obviously, when you think about it. Because those colours are what the flowers are in there. And um, obviously, because they're florals, they've got green in there as well. And... It's got the green bows and it's just, it looks adorable on that. So then I also got the yellow one out to put it on here because the, the colour block one has yellow, at the a block of yellow at the top. And I was like, ooh, I must try the yellow one on it. And now, yes, it, in case you <laughs> I feel like you know what's coming, it's going to be a girl group in a minute. I think there was a phase where there were all those girl groups and they wore the same outfit but in different colours. Yeah, it's going to look like that in a minute. Uh, so I get out the third floral jacket. I haven't actually finished the third one yet. I, I think the strawberry one needs a tiny bit of work as well, just at the elbow points, because I feel like on the right sleeve, um, yeah, it's got two bits of fern uh, like on the inside of the elbow, but um, like the crook of your arm, but I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it needs something there. I'm not sure what. And um, yeah, so here we go. It's girl group <laughs> or group shot. And yeah, they could be my Josie in the, this could be my Josie in the Pussycats um, footage. So yeah, I just think they look so absolutely cute because I usually pretty much exclusive or exclusively wear my jackets with a plain t-shirt and plain dark jeans just dress them down like all the time but I do like putting them on the mannequins in all different ways so yeah I do think the two jackets that I made this month are they're shorter than the yellow one I don't know how I worked that out I must have just turned up more on the hem than I did with the yellow jacket so I think when I make the white one white and green one that I will make that a little bit longer maybe a few inches longer actually so quite a little bit longer because I do have a lot of white flowers and a lot of foliage for that one I don't love this scoop neck like at, when it was just a jacket like a plain jacket without any flowers or beads on it I loved it it looks so cute so I think maybe I will try it with the tweed but I don't think it works as a three-dimensional jacket. It just adds bulk in the wrong area. It, I just don't think it's flattering. I'm relatively flat-chested, so I think it will get. I'll get away with it. And it's only one jacket, but I don't think I'll do another floral jacket like this. Perhaps if I'd used smaller flowers, it would have worked. Oh, and then I put the that over on my desk because I have to finish that dark red that sort of plum flowered one and then I put this tweed jacket on here because I think it looks I thought it would look really good with the dress I don't like this double neckline but I do love the colors together I think they work well together 
So, yeah, and I've just been watching Amelie and it has, um, she throws stones because so, I'm trying to think about the sewing to a theme, movie themes for um, the months to come for the rest of the year. I thought I would take time this episode to sort of look back at what I've achieved this month and whether it's worth it to, you know, sew to a theme. Oh, and that's a black and white patchwork dress that I forgot to put in the video. It's, I'll, um, yeah, oopsie. So these are the things that I made this month. And yeah, I just, and sadly, I have to put away these tweeds. I'm so upset about it because, yeah, I really wanted to make all of them up, especially the jacquard, like the middle one. If you're familiar with the designer Dries Van Norten, he just does the most gorgeous, um, like, really warm, dark, rich colours and he uses a lot of jacquards and yeah, that jacquard just reminds me so much of Dries and yeah, so I really wanted to make that one because I was interested to see how I would beat it but I, I think I'll keep it out. I might put the rest of them away for now but I definitely want to keep that one out because that is just, it's just going to be so beautiful to work with because you can see where you could put like um the sort of mauvey ones the brown smoky brown gold beads i just think it would be great to work with also another tweed that i'm going to keep out is this one here because you know the dress that i made out of this fabric well a scrap of it fell onto my beads it just happened to fall onto some beads that were like the same blues and that ceramic -y sort of earthy peach color and I was like oh I I really need to do this so I've got these zebras they are originally for if you know my orange Chanel jacket and you've seen the beading of that so you know what the orange Chanel looked like before it had green beads on it you'll see the zebras and this um, dinosaur they were all that color originally I was going to do a beaded trim I ended up embellishing it which means putting beads all over the entire jacket but originally I was going to make this weird beaded trim but now I think I'm at a point where I've got enough skill to try and attach toys all over so embellish it with these hand-blown beads and I think as long as I do enough structural layer on the back because this tweed is um it's sort of a mix of strips of decorative fabric as well as these really fine, fine threads and yarns and wools and ribbons. It's just, it's going to be, it's a really, really difficult, delicate tweed to work with. So you're going to have to do a lot of hand sewing anyway. And I know it sounds weird, but the more beads you put on it, the more you protect the tweed. So even though it is difficult to hand stitch, because with um unusual sorts of beads or toys basically what you have to do is use fishing line or invisible thread and you have to hand stitch them on and invisible thread is extremely hard to sew with because it's kind of stretchy it's got tension to it so if you don't have the correct tension then either your beads fall off or it stretches and it weakens so yeah, but it's going to be such an exercise in patience. But I also think it's just going to be magnificently weird. And I added the bok choys in there because I just don't think the bok choys will ever look good on anything else. And yeah, I think I love like just a little uh, flashes of green in there and will look so unexpected. And yet, I don't know, I feel like I feel like they work because there is green in the, the sort of decor thicker decorator fabric. I'm not sure when exactly I'm going to get time to do this, but I'll make the jacket and go from there. So, yeah. But, um, oh, I was going to talk about, I was just thinking about whether it was worth doing Vlogmas, like making a sewing video each day during the December and, well, and then for January, like, is it worth sewing to a theme? for what I did with um, Desperately Seeking Susan. So first up, we'll talk about Vlogmas and making a video each day. I think a lot of people this year I found did videos like over two days or three days. So they did like 
maybe a dozen videos over Vlogmas. And I think that's probably a lot more manageable than doing one every day. I did make a few beforehand. So I had a couple of um, fabric hauls that I pre-shot and then I partially made some things so that like they were on a second rack that I have. And um, so if I only had a few hours sewing time that day, I could finish filming the rest as I made it and then have um, do the couple of hours of editing at night. So that worked, but it was an awful lot of preparation. But on the other hand, when you're working and you have to you know, meet this schedule every single day, you just produce so much work. And it sort of also makes you do things the correct way, because you know, you can't un like do a shortcut, then have to unpick it and do it again. So I find it adds to my discipline, but I can see how it would just be exhausting to some. But I also like um, in, on the left of the screen, there is the gingerbread jacket. And I think that's probably one of my favorite things. But I mean, they all are the Kandinsky. Ja yeah, or just everything. I think I particularly like the jackets that I made in December, but I also like most of the dresses. It's a little bit disappointed with that apricot empire line dress because the cotton is just so light it looks so much better when you use a quilting cotton you know a heavier thicker cotton and of course if I hadn't have done all that work in December I wouldn't have got this uh, Egyptian tweed jacket made and a lot of the beading done like I did the two sleeves this month but the rest of it, like the whole of the front, like the whole of the torso I did last month and it just, it took a lot of time. But I was really disciplined and I did a few hours on it, you know, each morning and then like got up early and did that and then did other things. So it's sort of, yeah, it, by breaking it up, I feel like I had I was really energized each morning. I was like, I've only got this amount of time to work on it. I must do some. And then I would go on and do something else. So I found it really, um, it's, it, it, I found it to be a really good discipline to do the vlogging. But I think when you get tired, then you just have to stop and say, yeah, I'm going to have a rest for a few days. So yes, I would definitely do Vlogmas again. And I would definitely recommend it if you... I mean, if it's something you want to do, if it's not, then absolutely don't because it, it is a lot of work but and it is a lot of careful planning and preparation and like you can't just run out to the store and find something. You have to <laughs> have thought enough in advance to have everything on hand because you just simply don't have time to go out and browse and shop and things like that. So anyway, the next question I was asking myself as um, my 60 days of making a video, a uh, one video each day has come to an end was, um, oh, this is so, this is just the sped up footage of um, the video I did at the start of January about um, like as I watched Desperately Seeking Susan and took all these screenshots and then sort of told the story of the movie and stopped it every now and again like I made a jacket out of um, inspired by this pink and the turquoise so um, yeah and I really like that jacket and I'm still deciding how to beat it and then um, I love this cigarette jacket too. So yeah, I just sort of watched it and um, just sort of looked at what it, I wouldn't say I copied any of the things from in the movie. Like I just had this silver sequin. I was like, oh, she's wearing, the, the top is silver sequin and the bottom of the dress is that Cinderella periwinkle blue. So, and um you know, I could make a jacket like that. And this one, I already had the gold sequin fabric. Like I'm just, I've just got so much stuff in my tweed collection, my bead collection. And then I've got these other random fabrics as well. Oh, that one I bought at the end of last year, those two Liberty fabrics, but I turned those two into a gorgeous dress. And then that inspired the, um, the apricot jacket that I made as well. So I think it was worth it. It was it was really hard work. I think for the next few months, I'll just sort of watch the movie, come up with loads of ideas, but then whittle it down really quickly and say, okay, I'm going to make two things or five things and that's it. <laughs>
bit because this endless, you know, these endless ideas, it was great to start with. But then I think you have to, well, for me personally, I think going from all those possibilities, I just have to whittle it right down and say, okay, I'm only going to have the time and energy and, you know, bandwidth to make two things or four things and then choose what they, you know, two jackets and two dresses and that'll be it. And yeah, I mean, I can go back later on, like um, this jacquard in the sort of brownie gold with the mauve in it, purpley mauve, I'm definitely going to make that one. And the Heart of Midlothian jacket, I am definitely definitely going to do that one like I love the sequin dragon sequin dragon scale sequin um, jacket that I made and I've got these beads they're gonna yeah they're gonna look like the bricks but in a heart shape so they're quite long and and thinnish and they're just going to be perfect so yeah I've got a lot of structural layers on that green dragon scale sequin jacket and so it's going to be on the back and then I'm also going to have some beads around the neckline and the cuffs just to match to just sort of even out the weight of the jacket so that the front will have some as well as the back and yeah this jacket was I thought those sequins would be more difficult to work with the uh, my sewing machine didn't like them because the hole at the top is so tiny the sewing machine needle kept getting stuck in them but I think I'll be better. I've got another dragon scale sequin, bit of fabric. Hopefully now that I've used it once, I'll be better with it. But all in all, I think working like sewing to a theme is a really good idea. I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I had enough ideas to just do a whole year's worth of sewing. So yeah, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad. I guess it depends how you plan things and how you like get inspired and whether you like to plan everything, all your makes for one year. I'm sort of one of those people who likes to generate a lot of ideas and then I'll do some of them and then I like have other ideas. So it is a little frustrating. But I mean, on the other hand, I did get quite a bit done. Oh, I didn't finish the I'm really sorry that I didn't get to the gold and and ruby one I made this gold Mark Jacobs tweed up into a jacket in December and then I wasn't sure how to beat it and as I was watching Desperately Seeking Susan the MC in the um the magic box the the theater where she works um he wears like this red shirt under a gold jacket and it just reminded me of this Valentino dress from years and years ago. So, yeah, I mean, if I hadn't watched the movie and I hadn't been thinking about how can I use the ideas in this to inspire me to, you know, make my jackets and, and whatever else, then I would never have come up with the idea of gold and rubies um, for this Marc Jacob gold tweed. So I'm really happy about that. And there are some other jackets, like the earrings inspired one. I mean, I just, I I'd had all these things, but I just never in a million years think I would have made this jacket if I hadn't been watching a 1980s movie and thought to myself, oh, in the 80s and 90s, like at the end of last century, Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel did these amazingly bling jackets and I know Vogue sort of featured them heavily at, at some points and yeah it, it never would have I don't think I ever would have done I, I mean obviously I did buy this sequin fabric and I have bought all these beads over the years but I don't think I ever would have combined them in this way if I hadn't been watching that movie and hadn't been watching it specifically to look at ideas and inspiration for my jacket. So yeah, in that respect, it's sort of definitely thrown me out of my comfort zone because I tend to make a certain type of um, design that's um, less, less obvious. Well, my designs are getting more and more bling. I have to say that these three flower ones, for example, are 
hilariously bling. And the sort of purpley wine coloured one isn't even part of the um, movie inspired collection. But I think I think I'm sort of balancing, um, you know, watching the movie, finding inspiration, you know, rummaging through the tweeds and the beads that I have, and sort of coming up with possibilities. And then sort of making a few of them. But then like with this one, after I did this one, I did the one with the string theory jacket with the bows. And the Madonna character, Susan, her best friend, Crystal, she wears like vintage clothes mixed with neon. And that has really inspired me. I love her. Like she wears, I just love that mix of vintage plus neon. I think that's what ins is inspiring me with this one that I just got all the zebras out for and the dinosaur. I think, yeah, it's just really quirky and it's not, I sort of hate the idea of, just making clothes that make you look pretty or make you look beautiful. I want things that are ugly and interesting as well. So, and also technically challenging to make, which explains all those floral jackets. Anyway, so yeah, I am going to keep doing a different theme for each month, but I think I'll also, if I'm if it inspires something that's sort of off the beaten track a little bit, like this one, I just really want to do a green metallic jacket because I love that, um, the facade of that theatre. So yes, sewing to a theme is awesome, in my opinion. It was really inspiring. and But I think I just need to know when to cut off. I'll just, you know, make a short list or a long list and then very quickly cut it down to a short list and then work on just, you know, two or four or five things, whatever. And then um, whatever they inspire, I'll also sort of do those secondary inspiration pieces as well because that's been the most fun. Like the bows on the string theory jacket, love that. But I also really, really absolutely love the Egyptian tweed with the gold beads which was pretty much directly inspired by the iconic jacket from the movie so yeah anyway that is it for this video thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you've been inspired to either sew on a theme or um give vlogmas a, a go at the end of this year it definitely I mean a me made May is coming up next. I guess that's the next thing. But yeah, it's it's worth trying the challenge, even if it's just for one week rather than the whole month. It certainly was tiring, but at the same time, it also injected a lot of energy and creativity into my sewing practice. So yes, big thumbs up from me. Thanks again and happy sewing.